Welcome back to another episode of Let's Chat Podcast, y'all. I am your host, Jojo. And I'm Dara. Ooh. What's popping? Brand new whip just hopped in. There is no new whip. No new whip. Relax. <laughs> I was looking at her like, what? Sound good, though. Uh-huh. One day, babe. We'll get there one day. One day. <laughs> anyway, so catch up. Let's get into it. Um, Life is crazy. Well, we we had an episode last week, if you haven't um, listened to it, but we didn't have a chance to post it on any social media. About like, what? I haven't posted any podcast clips of the, oh, last, yeah, yeah, of the yeah, last episode. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. forgot about that. Uh-huh. Right. So last episode just went solo dolo. We released it and it was on its own. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I mean, it still had good numbers. Like, yeah. There was a need to like advertise a little, but... Yeah, we did have a new episode, if you didn't know, so go ahead and listen to it if you haven't done so already. That was the one where we did all the, like, um, anonymous Q&A. submissions. Yeah. And that were like, oh, confession this, confession that. And as somebody actually commented on the YouTube video and was like, oh, one of those were my submissions, so thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. Um, But yeah, catch up. We went to Col- Oh, my God. She breaking the thing. We went to Colombia. Again. Again. We did. We did. Mm-hmm. And so, what's up? Well, let's talk about the good stuff before the bad stuff. Girl, I wasn't even going to give them the hint of the bad stuff. Oh, really? Why not? Until, until we got there. Oh, okay. I mean, like, I mean, if you ever go on vacation and you have a perfect trip, then good for you. Yeah, valid. Good for you because there's always something. It's a hit or miss for sure. It, no, it's always something. It's for always you. A, <laughs> no, it's always something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, always. Um, but yeah, so we went to Colombia again. again. Um, I have a sister who has an Airbnb there, so we're blessed to like not have to like pay for like hotel and Airbnb and stuff like that. And it was a family vacation, so this was yep. like your basically like your first office official family vacation yes, because. It was. Before, like, you've been to Florida and you did the whole driving thing. So, I don't know. Florida is just, like, more low-key and, like, whatever. So, that that's what I was I had mentioned, too. I was like, damn, this is, like, essentially my first family vacation with them. Mm-hmm. But I, I did go to Florida, I think, like, two New Year's ago. Mm-hmm. And I spent it out there because her sister lives in Florida. So, and, like, they always do that with the kids out there. So, I was like, all right. And, like, that was, like, my first... I feel like that was my first family holiday, not really a vacation. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I was excited for that too. But this time is like first time completely traveling together. Like, yeah. Like on two Flight planes, after flight. Flight after yeah. flight. Like, yeah. Out like to, to a point where we're out somewhere where we all don't know or all not that familiar yeah, with. Yeah, international. Yeah. So that was fun. I liked it. It was cool. It's very more like... Even, I think we all noticed it. it was like the first time we went, it was just me, her, mm-hmm. her sisters, like grown ups, adults. There was no kids. Yeah. And this time around, it was like way more kids. Yeah. So, a lot the of vibes, screaming, a lot of craziness. <laughs> yeah. The energy is definitely different when there's kids around. Um, but nonetheless, it was, it was cute. It was, a, it was a wholesome time. Yeah. So, I feel like we did a lot less this time. One, because it was raining. It rained literally every day we were out there. Um, I got tied it up. <laughs> she did her whole back. And I did. Jeez uh, Louise. And I will give the reveal when I'm ready. I mean, it looks good now. So you can always give the reveal yeah. now. But you're going to yeah. wait? I'm going to wait. I'm uh, going to wait. I am in no rush. Dang. I am in no rush. Okay. Um, But yeah, I did that and that was fun. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not getting tattoos in the U.S. anymore. Like, we be... F- okay, so my sister and her man, they go there all the time, and they found, like, this really good tattoo artist who has multiple shops, and I feel like they do really good work. Really like, good no, work. Like, no no bullshit. Work. Like, no, like, really good work for, obviously, way cheaper. Mm-hmm. So, like, you really got a good deal. Yeah, yeah. The guy I, I went with, which... Again, I'll put it out there when I'm ready to put it out there. But the artist that I went with, he had really, really good work. He was super nice. The The studio that we were in was super nice. Um, 
you know, nothing crazy and over the top, but nonetheless, they, you know, the people there were really nice. You want to give them a range of like how much it cost? Okay, so she didn't do her whole back. I'm exaggerating. No, no, but no, it was yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Half of her back, like a quarter of your back. Yeah. So I already have like a centerpiece on my back, like a, um, on the top half of my back. Not even half. The centerpiece of the top of my back, and like there was the basically my left shoulder, back half, is what I got tatted. And I paid. I'm not gonna say it was cheap. I paid a pretty penny, but for what I paid before. I don't know. I'm I don't want to say I paid a lot because I have like my original like my actual artist. He's always been good to me and he's never charged me an arm and a leg. So that will always be my main man and he continues to do my tattoos till this day. Um I just decided to get one while I was out yeah. there. Um since everyone was getting one at that point cuz like her sisters got tatted up, her mm-hmm. brother-in-law got tatted up. So it was like, you know, a family function at this point. Um, but I paid just about $600 for this piece. Yeah. And it sounds like a lot, but you guys have to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Once you see the work, you're just like, all right. Cause honestly, I think it would have been way more if I would have got something like that out here. Oh my goodness. Way more. Like from any artist outside of my original artist. Yeah. I mean, you got to think about it. Like tattoo artists have like a minimum. Yeah. Like no matter how small or whatever, like let's say you really want a small tattoo, their minimum could be like 150 Yeah. And that's for like a small piece. Valid. So just imagine, right? If you get something that's like more detailed. But it's still wrapped up right now. I leave it wrapped up for a few days and then, you know, I'll let it breathe and go from there. Yeah. The worst part about getting a tattoo though, I'm always so excited to get it. And then when I'm in the process of getting it, I'm like regretting it. I'm like, mm-hmm. what am I doing? Why am I here? Like, I hate this process. Like, yeah. I, like once you're like two, two, three hours deep, and honestly, like my pain tolerance probably only goes as far as like the first three to four hours. After that, and this took eight hours. <laughs> just about. So eight hours. I was like, I at that point, I know I'm not the only one. At that point, I wanted to fight my artist. Because yeah. now I felt like it was all intentional. Like you're hitting the same spot that you know that hurts and it's on purpose and I want to fight you. <laughs> like He's just doing his job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being a yeah. perfectionist. He, and he was saying that. He was like, yeah, I think she want to fight. And I started laughing because no I was way. like, oh, you know, I was tight. Oh, okay. But he did a great job and he was absolutely great with me. Awesome. Um, I use Google Translate. <laughs> Nah. Um, what language should I translate to? Google. Be quiet. Don't even say Google anymore. I know. I play oh myself. My gosh. Um. So yeah, that was the fun thing. We ate a lot, which was also good. Which actually is what took Dyra out of the game or the rest of the vacation, really. Yeah, I literally lost seven pounds this week. Seven pounds. Tragic. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I've talked about it before, but I have Crohn's disease, which is like IBS, but it's worse because it's actually like diagnosed and you can get surgery for it, all of that. I've had it for years, like almost 15 years. I've had flare-ups before, but nothing like this, bro. Like it was like I couldn't eat. I couldn't, I was, I literally had to go to the hospital. Then after the hospital, I had to go to a doctor that came, well, the doctor came to the Airbnb. They was giving me IVs. Then when we came back, I went to another, uh, to to a hospital in the U.S. It was just a fucking tragedy. Yeah. Like, literally, well, it was like, I got sick, like maybe like three days into the trip. So after that, I was down bad. Like I, I couldn't do shit. Like, I was so weak. Nothing. I was throwing up. I was like... Her, her like, fainted. temperature was low at one point. Like, Instead of it being high, like, my temperature was, like, at 91. It was the weirdest shit in the world. And, like, in Colombia, when you go to the hospital, like, I feel like we're so quick in the U.S. to, like, complain about, like, oh, my God, they're terrible here. And, and they really are. Like, sometimes the hospitals suck. Um, but I feel like in Colombia, they're, they're quick to give you medication. And over here in the U S it's the opposite. It's like, we're going to run all the tests, which is good, but that shit costs money. 
But we're not going to give you anything. If anything, we're going to give you Tylenol. Like, girl, I could get that in the fucking pharmacy. Mm. Like, are you serious? So I feel like in Colombia, they didn't do the test, but they gave me meds. And then when I came here, they ran tests. They were like, well, everything looks normal. So we think you got like food poisoning or something. And I'm like, of course I would. Of course I would. We went to this really, really nice restaurant. What's it called? It's oh, something in Tulum. It's called, yeah, Tulum. Oh, Tulum. Tulum in Mexico or something like that in uh, Medellin. And it's a popular restaurant where a lot of people go for birthdays. And we were like, well, we want to go to like a little birthday thing for my nephew and like go to a nice restaurant. Um, they have like really cute drinks. There's like women dancing around. There's people playing um, instruments and all this shit. They give everybody like a little sparkly thing. Living our best life. Then the next day, I am just like, I don't know what the fuck it was. I don't know if it was the shrimp or elote, but I always eat elote and I've never had a reaction like this, but it was not, I've never seen something like that. Like, I'm I'm not even exaggerating. Like, it was like seven pounds in a week. You can just imagine. Like, it took her out. Down bad. Like, I'm in the airport on a wheelchair. That's how bad it was. Yeah. Looking yeah. crazy. Cutting lines and everything. Cutting lines. I was like, okay, special treatment. Okay. <laughs> Y'all gonna put me in first class or what? Nah, they didn't. Nah. <laughs> put her ass straight in the back. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I couldn't even walk, bro. It was bad. Yeah. And it's sad to see. And, like, her parents... I don't want to say, like, I'm, I'm like it's normal or anything or, like, I'm used to it. But, like, I live with you, right? Yeah. So, I feel like you've had a lot of... Hospital trips. Yeah. Within the the last couple years of us being together and I feel like maybe your your parents forgot what that was like yeah because now that we're back here and they were actually with us when it was happening like your mom was like really scared like oh my god my mom was crying she was crying like like, when we were in the hospital she um when I, I was sitting, yeah, 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 yeah. We they so we get to the hospital. Mind you, the first hospital she went to, you didn't tell them the first. Oh, oh my god! So I go to the first spot hospital, and they're like, "Yeah, it's gonna take." First of all, they were this like, is four o'clock in the morning." Five o'clock yeah, yeah, in the morning. four o'clock in the morning. They're like, "So, where are you from?" They always ask this, and I'm like, "Why do you care?" Mm-hmm. The United States of America, <laughs> and then they were like, "Okay, well." It's going to take 24 to 36 hours for someone to see you. And I was like, what? But I believe them, honestly, because there were so many people there that actually needed, like, really, like, attention. Like, people's older people, their feet were swollen. They were, like, on wheelchairs. There was this lady, like, she had throat cancer. And, like, her throat was, like, open. It was, like, it was wild. This man was, like, he could barely stand. And he was, like throwing up and I was like oh this is like I felt like oh my god like where do I go Mm. like this is crazy and like look at me looking all healthy and young they're like you don't need shit like you can leave so they were like you should go to this other clinic that foreigners go to and like maybe they'll take care of you there and and then that's what happened but I feel like the reason why they took care of me there so quickly is because I was like I was like okay like now I'm really about to faint like I now we had to travel take all these taxis 20 minutes away by the time I get there I'm like I'm about to throw up I'm about to throw up it was terrible ends up throwing up throwing up as I'm checking in and I'm telling the lady I need to throw up I need to throw up I couldn't even find a fucking bag to throw up in anywhere so I threw up in the sink it was bad (laughs) It was bad. I, I was like, let me hold her hair, but I'm holding her hair like this. It was <laughs> disgusting. Yeah. Which I didn't even, I'm like, what the fuck does she have to throw up? Because she's only been like shit for what the last I had. day or two. It was the breakfast I had. You had breakfast? I had an omelet. Oh, I didn't know you yeah, ate Yeah, with breakfast. corn. Yeah. Oh, the day before. No, no, no. Oh, well, the, because we, in the we, morning. And then that night is when I threw it up. The morning. Anyway, <laughs> Monday we went to breakfast. I mm-hmm. felt sick Monday yeah. night. Tuesday morning we went to the hospital. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's right. all I had. Literally an omelet. Yeah. So they get her in a in a little bit, and we're behind a curtain waiting, chilling. She has to go to the bathroom. She goes to the bathroom by herself, which I honestly should have known better. But one thing that 
if you know, you know, is that Dyra's a stubborn person and she's going to do what she wants to do. So, I mean, what am I going to do? Shit myself? So, <laughs> Go wase. No. So she she goes to the bathroom and I'm like, okay, like I'm going to let her do her thing. Like I don't want to be up her ass. So I'm like, all right, she feels good to go to the bathroom. She's going to go to the bathroom. She goes and I'm sitting in the chair. Mind you, we're all so tired. And I'm just like chilling, waiting for somebody to come in. And I hear like my name being called distantly like distantly and 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 initially i looked and i didn't see nobody so i was like all right i was like i guess somebody else here has that name so you know i lay right back in the chair and i'm just like all right and then i hear it like almost getting closer and i'm like who the fuck is calling me and then her mom pops in of the hallway like where we're at and she's just like you know saying my name and like like in a scare so i i I don't even have my shoes on because I gave her my shoes um, to go to the bathroom. So I jump up out the fucking chair and I'm running down the hallway and I'm like, what? And, and her mom's like, mm. and I'm like, this girl's on the floor. I guess she fainted. And I'm like, what the fuck? So by that time that like the nurses and stuff were already there, we're like getting her in bed. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess that put a little heat under their ass because then they, t- they, they put an IV in for her. Yeah, I was just really just dehydrated yeah. as fuck. Mind you, I was drinking Pedialyte like crazy. Like, I'm so over Pedialyte after this. Like, yeah, I'm over it completely. And I remember telling Jojo, like, oh, I want to do, like, a little juice cleanse. Like, why don't we do, like, a little three, <laughs> like, a little three-day juice cleanse or whatever. After that Nah, experience. bro. <laughs> but you know what it was, though? It was, like, it was, like, going to the bathroom all the time. Because there's one thing just eating and, like, mm-hmm. you're good. But, like. The ha- the fact that you're eating and then running to the bathroom it is like what's the point yeah like, what are we doing here so yeah so that was the tragedy of the trip ended up getting sick whole trip not whole trip got ruined because we still did stuff like we still did the touristy stuff like I feel like oh I also did I went to the dentist another thing um I went to the dentist as well over there got my teeth whitened and I got a veneer just one. <laughs> Um, and it was something that I really wanted to get done because I went to so many dentists here. Like, listen, there's this one tooth that really bothers me. It's just like a little bit more yellow, little things that like people be like, I don't see it. I see it. But it's like something that bothers me. And the reason why is because I've paid, like I've had braces. I had Invisalign and I'm like, you, the tooth is not fixing itself. I've done the, the white crest strips, all of that. And it's to the point where I'm like, this tooth is rotting. Like I have a lot of teeth problem, believe it or not. And, you know, it's funny, people who have a lot of teeth problem also also have a lot of health problems. Like, that's connected in some way, and you don't have any because your teeth are perfect. So, yeah. But, yeah, so I found this doctor on Instagram. I'll tag her if you guys want. And she has, like, a lot of followers, but I feel like her clinic is small for a reason because it's, like, we're going to give you, like, what you're looking for. It's not, like... I went to so many, like, I've talked to so many dentists and they'll be like, oh, you got to change eight to 10 teeth. I'm like, are my teeth that bad? Because yeah. I don't think I have to change my whole mouth. Like, I told you I had Invisalign and I had braces. And I have braces on my on my bottom teeth, too. So I was like, oh, that's crazy. Like, I mean, we'll see what it looks like. I was and just trying to make the bucks. I feel trying like to make the bucks. That. I even went to a doctor in New York just to talk, just to talk to them, get the consultation, take pictures, all that. They said to do, first of all, he said, I think we could do like the one tooth that bothers you and the little whitening. They said $30,000 when I went there. That was I, never happening. I said, thank you so much. I will go ahead and look at this and I will let you know. <laughs> Soon as we got into that elevator, I looked at Jojo like, they got to be fucking kidding me. $30,000, that's a down payment on a house. For teeth, for for teeth, for ten teeth only that I have to change in another fifteen years, you're bugging, bro. Especially when my teeth aren't that bad. I was like, oh, y'all wasted my fucking time here. I was like, okay, well, did the consultation here? Y'all playing games, okay? And I found that doctor because of this girl we follow, Erica. She went to them, and I was like, oh, let me go see them. But whatever. That dentist was so nice, and she was like, your teeth are so beautiful. Like, I, I know what you mean with, like, the little tooth that bothers you. We're going to go, you're going to go to the lab. They're going to match it with, like, your other teeth. That way it's not too white. Um, Because th- that's the other thing. I was like, I don't want to look like I have cheeklets in my mouth. Like, don't do that. 
because I don't like that look. I don't like the fake too fake, yeah, 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 too yeah. white, it's like, like too it's, perfect. Right, it's too perfect. So I was like, I don't. That's not the look I'm going for. Yeah. And I feel like she did such a good job, and like she just kept complimenting my teeth, and like everything was so quick and so cheap. Literally so cheap. For one veneer, I'll give you guys a range because I had to do some, they had to cut a little bit of my gums um, and they had to whiten it and I did three sessions. The range was like from $300 to $500, US dollars for a veneer plus the teeth whitening plus the retainer because I wear a retainer at night and I, I was like, give me two retainers. my teeth. Give me two retainers because I need that. Um, and yeah, just super nice, friendly. Even my dad went to go get a teeth cleaning. So it literally just all worked out. And like, luckily I wasn't feeling bad like during the time that I had to like get that work done. Yeah. And it was pretty quick too. Facts. Yeah. All in all, now she's feeling better. I we feel almost, like a brand new person here. I hate to say it again, but we really almost skipped another episode. Especially because, like, we just got back, we came back, had to go to the hospital again, and it was. Oh, just we didn't even lot. get to go to Preciosa night in New York. I know because it's I the know. same day that we came from JFK, and I was at the hospital and shit. Yep, yep, yep. Imagine. So me. all in all, it's been a great but busy past week. It's like to the point where it's like we need a vacation from that. From vacation. the vacation, that is the worst. Yeah, we do that Salty. a lot. Like me and Jojo, I don't think we go on vacation. I think we travel. Yeah, I think we gotta we change doing the most. There's we, a we there, try to get we, everything out of. You gotta change the wording. I think there's a difference between like traveling and then yeah. vacationing. Because vacation, you're relaxing, yeah, you're like yeah, reading yeah, yeah. books, Valid. you're taking, you're getting a tan, you're yeah. eating whatever the fuck you want, and travel is like, oh, okay, we have an itinerary, we got appointments, we got tattoo appointments, we got this, we have that, we got we wanna like see it's this, like we want to see that, like we're constantly exploring. right, and like when you're traveling with family, especially my family, it's not like they're not timely people. <laughs> They're not timely people. We get there when we get there. Kids running around. My nephew has autism. So it's like, it's really chaos. Like, it's it's chaotic all the time. La yado. <laughs> anyway, that's our catch up for the past week. Um, for this episode, it's just another, it's just another freestyle episode, y'all. It was either come up with another freestyle episode or not give you an episode. Not give you shit. Um, which... You know, sometimes we do, but, you know, we wanted to give y'all something um, because we didn't want to just come back with nothing. But this episode, we just going to get into some like potential, you know, good conversation starters, not only for, um, I mean, obviously couples. And I think I had sent you one that was like with friends or starting to date. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I've followed this page on TikTok and it's like. A, um, how do you say it? Like they're cards. They're called flamingo cards. Yeah, there's actually like two or three different mm-hmm. pages of different like type yeah, of questionnaire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, I follow them and they bring up like a lot of good like questions. I feel like you don't think about. So this when I see this though, like this makes me think about like the you know when you're in those first dating stages mm-hmm. and you're like having late night talks mm-hmm. and you know just coming up with things. That you just happen, about, yeah, yeah right. that you just happen to be thinking about, and I feel like we all have those phases and periods when we're dating, and we love those phases because that's where like you're, I don't know, like in that deep, deep convo. Yeah, 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 and 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 it that's where like that connection and bond starts to grow. So I feel like as couples, especially like as me and you being together three years in our fourth year now, like. It's a little bit, not that we don't because we live together, we talk Mm -hmm. about so much already, but I feel like sometimes we can get away from that. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that like this page, which it's called, like she said, flamingo.cards on TikTok. Um, This is not sponsored. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, right. But um, I feel like they had some good questions and I and I wanted to go over it with me and her. We haven't, we've looked at it, but we haven't like answered it. So, you know, if I'm stuck- then I'm skipping it. <laughs> this reminds me of like a Patreon episode. Like we did one? Like the format. Oh. I yeah. don't know what that means. Okay, continue. <laughs> uh, excuse me. So the first question is, if you could, would you rather spend a day with your younger or older self? I saw this question. I thought about it. 
Okay. I feel like a lot of people would say their younger self. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say that. Valid. Because I feel like... There's there like there's not things about me now that I'm like so regretful of that I need to go back to my younger self and be like, don't do this or do that. Like I feel like I came out to be like a well individual. Like I don't feel disappointed by like my accomplishments or anything like that. Like I feel like I've tried my best and I'm mm-hmm. still always trying. Like it's like what else could I fucking do, girl? Like <laughs> right. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So I I wouldn't go back to my younger self. I feel like maybe. When it comes to relationships, I could go back to my younger self, but I feel like at the same time, those are experiences. Like all mm-hmm. the all the romantic relationships that I've had, regardless if it was with men, women, whatever, I think they were all like an, a learning experience. So I don't really regret any of them and I wouldn't go back like, ah, oh, don't date them or yes, date them, bullshit like that, you know? Facts. But I would want to see like my older self just to like, I don't know, like... I feel like not to tell the future, but kind of like to, like, what can I do to help the my older version? Like, I want to I wanna get to a stage in life where I'm just like, soft girl era, like, you know? So it's like, I would try to see and, I don't know, try to figure out, like, how can I help you as an older person, me being younger? Like... Someone who's like in their sixties is it, is it your health? Do you need to do something with the health situation? Like, what's happening with you? What you know? Yeah, I think that's a big thing for you. Oh, like the health, health stuff yeah. is always I and think. like it's so weird because I feel like I eat pretty good. I mean, like I don't understand what they want me to do. Yeah. Become a vegan? No. I think that I agree with some of that. I, this is like where my like great area personality mm-hmm. comes in because I feel like naturally, like you said, we want to go to our younger selves and be like, listen, you're going to be good. You're fine. You turned right. out well. Like all those, like you said, all those experiences were necessary, even though it hurt in the time and we didn't want it. Um, but I'm very big on like things happening I don't always want to say things happen for a reason, but things happen how they happen and it's what you do with it. It doesn't matter. Like things are always going to happen. We can't con- always control what happens to us and and we just have to be resilient enough to like move past it. And that's like basically what I do is just find a way to get over it or like through that hurdle. Um, but I think I wouldn't even want to like sit with my older self either though. Why are you scared? I don't want to say that I'm scared, but I don't want to ruin my present. Mm. So I think I would just sit with myself how I am right now. Naturally, we want to we want to know if we we're better than what we are right now, because sometimes, like even like I won't say I'm in I'm in the worst time right now, but for some people who kind of feel like they are in their worst, they want to know that they made it to the better, mm-hmm. and I just feel like. That just ruins your present. I don't know. Really? Even when you're, yeah, even when you're like, especially like now, I'm in a good position. I feel like I'm not like in, um, I don't know. I just feel like it It ruins it mm-hmm. because then you're just like, you're, you're going to be so eager to get to that point in your life mm-hmm. that you're going to forget or like not be in the present mm-hmm. right now because you're like, oh, like, I don't know. I almost feel like it won't motivate you to be better. No, I think it will. I don't know. I mean, maybe some. I'm not going to say it's, it's going to be, you know, uh, non-motivating for all. But I think what will be unmotivating is if you see yourself and you're like, that is not who I want to be or who I want to become or like what the fuck I was thinking. Like, well, that I mean, too. Things, so then when you want to just be the- take a turn, you know, like right. God forbid something happens. People get into car accidents. People lose their jobs. Like, it's like, oh my goodness. Like, yeah, things really could take a left. But but that ruins your present as well. I th- because now you're like, oh, what did I, how did I get there? What, what? But you're, at the same time, it makes fear- you, I feel like it also makes you like appreciate life because you're yeah. like, oh, if I'm then I got to live right now because clearly things aren't looking well for me. Or it could just speed up that really bad situation. Depends on your age. I feel yeah, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, but valid. All right, next question. If someone offered you a box containing everything you ever lost, what would you look for first? 
<laughs> I've lost so many things. Um, I wouldn't really look for a, a thing, though. I feel like I would look for a person. I wouldn't look for material things. When my... I lost so many things. There was a fire in the building where we grew up. My parents still live in it. And we got all this water damage. And we lost so, so much stuff. So many pictures. Like, so much shit from high school. Like... So I feel like to me, I don't really have that many things to hold on to. So now I'm just like, just throw it out. Me and her are always like arguing about things like that. Cause I'm like, just throw it out. Just throw it out. Like I'll just buy a new one because what the, f I hate clutter and like mess, you know? I mean, it's to an extent. I feel like obviously you She'd can't be throw. She'd ready to throw shit you out. You can't throw everything. And I'm just like, never relax. Know. Like <laughs> she on a throwing spree. Like this could yeah. be something. We could use this. Or hey, this has sentimental value. Like The sentimental value thing for her. Yeah. It's crazy. That's, it's a thing. Because it's you, crazy. because guess what? Sometimes we we people live in these things. So when you lose people, like my mom, my mom's mm -hmm. a, my mom's a really <laughs> love my mom, but that woman's a hoarder, low key. <laughs> and but she the things I know that the things that she keep, mm -hmm. a good majority of it at least is like she it's her like mm -hmm. it's what makes her her it's what she loves it's what like jewelry is a big thing for us. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I grew up in a jewelry. Oh yeah, business. I mean, jewelry is different because yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. you get money out of that. But but even that, you knowing like, oh, well, you guys got all that that jewelry or like you grew up in a jewelry mm -hmm. business. Why would you want more jewelry? Like, I, I mean, I, I don't I don't think of it like that because like it's that. like jewelry is jewelry. Yeah. I don't know. But I like, you know, we I don't know. I, I keep things closest to me. It, it depends on what it is. I'm not saying everything, but, you know, memories live in things that are people. For me. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I, I think it depends on what. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know what I would look for first if I lost something. Because I can't remember of anything that I lost. <laughs> or I don't want to think about anything I'll lose in the future, but whatever. Uh, if you could know the absolute truth to one question, what would you ask? The truth? Yes. I need to know what really happens after death. And if there's a heaven and a hell. Do you believe in reincarnation? I do because I've I've heard of like crazy stories of like little kids talking about some past life, and I'm like, what are you saying? Like how how are you? It's like, like when you get deja vu, old? right? Yeah, how are you five years five years old and you're talking like that? And some people really have like an old soul mm -hmm. to them. Yeah, facts. What I about agree. You? Uh, I don't know what question I would ask. If you could know, absolutely. If there's like life in another planet and we just don't know. And they're smarter than us, for yeah. sure. They're smarter. I would think just like, what is it that we don't really know about life? But like, what if life worlds. as we really know it, that it's not really like... Yo, movies be playing. There's other earths. I swear. Do you feel like when we see, like, you you watch movies that bring up the idea of, like, what makes you start questioning life and the mm -hmm. world and the government? Mm -hmm. And then you're just like, is this is this you plainly telling me? Mm -hmm. or, or is this you giving mm -hmm. the world ideas? Yeah. Yeah, this is why I love watching Black Mirror. Yeah, so, it's so, crazy. So weird. Because it's Such just like, whose stuff. imagination is this? Is this like this? So this is either real life happening, and you're telling us, and we're just too blind. We just seeing this as entertainment and not taking it for real, or this somebody's coming up with this shit. The creative directors be on drugs when they do these shows. <laughs> I'm telling you, they be on drugs. <laughs> if you met your ten year old self, what would you say? Girl, you better, like, girl, you better play some sports. Oh, that Because I was, I, I never played a sport in my she life. She was not a sports girly. I was never played a sport. My, my parents never put me in a sport. My mom was like, you're, you're going to school and you're coming home. Like, she was very strict about that. You're going to school and you're coming home. Like, there's no after school stuff, no after school. No, 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 no. And I feel like now I'm like such a weak, skinny, fat person. I mean, that could be for another fucking episode, but like, Girl. God damn, can't even do a push up here. I could never do a push up. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a problem. That's a problem. One? That's not easy for just anybody. 
That takes a lot of core I feel like, stability and I don't some strength. Know, man. Like we'll work on it. We'll work on it. What would I say to my ten year old self? Mm. Any gay stuff? Bye. Like you're, no. you're gay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're gay. a gay girl. Don't worry about the boys. You're, you're gay. gay. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Nah, I think I was good. I was chilling. Nothing really bothered me other than like I got made yeah, fun I feel of like a little I, bit. When you're and, ten and you're just like in La La Land, I would yeah. think. Mm. Especially at that age where we didn't have social media. Like I feel right. like we were we were very naive. Like I feel like now, like my niece is hard. is what nine and like she's about to be ten and like she's so smart. But it's like they have YouTube, they have all these things. Mm-hmm. When we were ten, w- what did we have? TV and like. Disney. All you knew was how to ask for money and how to double dutch. Yeah, like we really <laughs> just grew up like very hands on with stuff. Yeah. So I feel like I'm grateful for that though. Yeah, I feel like I our worlds weren't way. really in like boys and girls. I don't know, like dating, at least for me. No. And like, yeah. What sentence destroyed you, but you acted like it didn't hurt? What sentence destroyed me? Yeah, I can't think of one. Has someone ever told you like, "Oh, I don't love you anymore"? Yeah, that didn't destroy you. Yeah, but I didn't act like it didn't hurt. That shit oh, hurt. Okay, you was you was <laughs> crying. That shit hurt. I was tight. Yeah, <laughs> I was hurt. What you mean? You was crying. It just didn't Ooh. make sense. Uh huh. Like, fuck you, mean? You went, All right, like, I don't like you then too. I don't know. Like, nah, um, nah, I can't think of one. So I don't know. Damn, let's just start talking. All right. If you had one wish, but it could only be for mm-hmm. someone else, what would it be? Now I have the song stuck in my head. If I had one wish, but it could only be for one person, it would be for my niece. Because she has cystic fibrosis, which is a fatal condition, which means that like your life expectancy is shorter. Mm-hmm. I mean, now, you know, there's tests, there's like new studies and things like that. And people are growing old with cystic fibrosis, but likelihood is like you have a very short lifespan. And I already lost my nephew, so that would, that would be mine. Yours? I think my wish would obviously go to my mother. And it would be? That... She has good health. Yeah, not even good health. I just probably would wish that she just didn't have to go through everything that she's went through. I feel like my mom's endured a lot of. But it makes her who she is as a person. Yeah, but like, I don't know, because I feel like so, like so many things has happened to my mom, and yes, my mom is strong, but I feel like her sense of mental resilience is not there. Like it's, she's been poured on so much in her Mm -hmm. lifetime that I feel like it's to the point where she just thinks like, why do bad, do bad things always happen to me? Like, of course Mm -hmm. it happened to me. Like, you know, she's in, she's not in her soft girl era. She's in her bitter girl area era. So you want her to be like in her soft girl era forever? So I want her, yes. Yes. I just want her to be. And what do you think, what do you think would get her there? I don't know. I think if I think that if she didn't go through the health issues she last went through, she would probably be there. Right. So I think like that would be my wish was that she didn't have to endure that, um, you know, mm-hmm. cold cancer thing. Yeah. Mm, which first time do you wish you could experience again? Why are you smiling <laughs> like that? <laughs> Uh, cause I don't know. You just uh, naturally you got, think first time. You got a dirty mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's you got a dirty was. mind. <laughs> now you calling me out while I'm doing it. Oh Lord! First time. Um, I'm trying to think. This one's hard. I feel like it will probably be like a time where like like we're just both having fun and like we don't even have like. Like, there's, like, no phones. We don't even know what, what's going on or, like, what time it is. We're just, like, vibing. Like, maybe, like, when we're on vacation or, like, out somewhere. I'm trying to think of a, speci- a specific um, scene, but I can't think of one. Like, throughout your life? No, I'm talking or about us. us. Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. 
I think um, first time. Ask the question again. It says, which first time do you wish you could experience oh, again? Okay, okay, okay. It doesn't have to be about us. No, but like those are the most recent ones that I can think of. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, honestly, our entire first year together, even though they're, you know, we had our times, but for the most part, it was really good. Yeah, first year only? Sorry, <laughs> <Sign> no. <up. laughs> No, uh, but that's where all our first times happen. Yeah, that's true. Of course. Our first vacation happened in our first year. Yeah. Our first holidays happen within the first year. Mm-hmm. Our first, you know, everything happened within the first year. Yeah. Post-COVID, you feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like we was meant to be, my boy. Mm. <laughs> I hate the way you dab me up. I know. <laughs> I know. I was like... <laughs> Because I never know if she's Ew. giving me a clap or if she's doing this, like... like. I just gotta high five her, but I feel like high fiving is so ick. But then you don't, you don't, you, you don't, know what that reminds me of? You don't bring it back. I'll be saying this shit. Hold up, because I'll be saying, because how do you bring it back on a high five? No, not on a high five. Because this is not how you do it to begin with. Look at oh, it's because you're hands. Yeah, but you, <laughs> you look gay. <laughs> you look gay. Doing I that. know. That's how I feel. <laughs> I read a post that was like, this is not a part of the question, John, but I did read a post and it was saying, oh, what the hell did it say? It w- I never felt so like related to it. Mm-hmm. And it was like something about being gay. Oh, I remember. But it's lesbian. I don't know. I forget. But what? What about it? Like basically like how... I, you know how I'm always saying, like, oh, even though, like, obviously I'm a girl. So when I do gay things, it like, I'm a girl. It's not gay. But then it's, like, mm-hmm. gay man behavior. Yeah. Like, gay man vibes. Right. So I resonated with that. That uh. was the point. Like, the point of the post was saying, like, oh, you know, yes, I'm a lesbian. But, like, I have this gay man yeah. tendency to me. Mm-hmm. People forget. Yeah. Crazy. What do you still want to do before you die? I want to go on a hot air balloon. Hot air balloon? Yep. Really? Yup. I really been thinking about like that Arizona trip. Mm. I want to go skydiving. And you're on your own. That's what you got why sisters don't you, for. Like, why That's don't what you, you got sisters for. Why That's what you got sisters for. <laughs> no, you heard your sister? She said she want to go skydiving. Y'all can go and I will hold y'all shit at the bottom of... No. But why don't you want to go skydiving? But you want to go on a hot air balloon? Yes. Skydiving is way quicker. So it's dominant. Maybe I don't want yeah. the quick. I like the nice and the slow. Nice and slow. I, I'm going to be like, if, when we go on this hot air balloon, do we have like some backpacks parachutes. with like parachutes or something? Because if this shit go on fire, what are we doing? I just think about that. No. No. It's like you're slow. I don't know, man. But okay. That's what you want to do before you die. Yep. Oh my goodness. Okay, maybe this is the last question. Um, that's saying. If I lost my memory, what's the first thing you tell me about us? This reminds me of the movie. What's the movie? Fifty First Dates. Is it that? Wait, oh, Adam is- Sandler. Yes, but then there's another. Oh, there's movie. another one. Um. The Vow or something. The Vow, yeah. Yeah. If you haven't watched it, y'all should. I love those movies. Yeah, that makes me sad because I really will be trying to force that shit. Like, you don't remember me? Like, showing you so pictures. I'm showing you pictures. I'm showing you videos. Uh-huh. All the little... Maybe, you know, I, I still be trying to be thoughtful and shit, but she just be throwing shit to the side. But the first year, I literally made... Like, I would buy her things that were like... Or make her things. I still have those. I know. Mm-hmm. It's one of them right there. But like, I, I, we, I used to be like mad thoughtful in the gifts that I would give her. Mm-hmm. And I feel like things like, like those hold sentimental values. Oh, that's true. You could show so me that. I feel like those things, yeah. Yeah. All Just the, a lot of videos. Yeah. You just have to make like a whole movie. Literally. And I would. <laughs> I love doing that. But what's the first thing you say? Or the first thing you tell me about us? Um... I don't know. I will show you the dogs. Oh. That's easy. Because I'd fall in love with the dogs. Yeah, and it's like, how could, like, it'll be less scary. So now I have to stay with this person because I love our dogs. <laughs> <laughs> no, and then you see pictures of you with the dogs. Like, oh, 
cute. Yeah. Cute. Mm-hmm. But like, would what happens if you're just like, like, are you immediately gonna be like, oh, I'm your girl? Or you're gonna like try to friend it out and then be like, no, little I will secret. Tell you I'm your girl. Imagine you're like, no, I'm straight. <laughs> I'm like, is the doctor cute or something? What's happening? Let me talk to him. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. Right. You like, all like, girlfriend. I'm, girlfriend. I'm, like, I don't know. No, like, that would be crazy. They should make a movie like that. That would be wild. They should make a movie like that. I'd, I'd be Whoever is the director, make a movie of a lesbian couple <laughs> or one of them hits their fucking head and then she's talking about she's straight when she wakes up. That's, That's crazy. Disappointing. I mean, we don't... <laughs> <laughs> so disappointing all right that was the last question we're gonna go into family meetings because we have a couple um we'll see which ones we can get through but yeah go on tiktok y'all there's like other than that one flamingo.cards there's other ones that are like a little little more deep yeah they're good conversation starters for you know friends and couples (laughs) all right I th- I don't think we we talked about this one, but it says, "I'm bi, but because of biphobia, my girlfriend thinks I'm lesbian. I have been with my girlfriend for seven years. The first three years of dating my girlfriend, I was still messing around with my sneaky link ex boyfriend. The first three years of dating my girlfriend, I was still messing around with my <laughs> sneaky link ex boyfriend. Okay, it's the reread. I'm like it. My ex-boyfriend was also in a serious relationship at the time. His girlfriend found our text conversation and sent a screenshot of it to my girlfriend. She's messy. My girlfriend thought I was cheating on her with his girlfriend. Oh, wow. (laughs) Because she sent her the screenshot with no comments. My girlfriend was mad but forgave me only because she thought I was talking to her girl. If she knew that she was, all right, if she knew that the sex thing was with my ex-boyfriend, a man, she would have had, she would have, she wouldn't have forgave me and I wouldn't be marrying her in four months. What's the question here? No, this is a little secret. This is a sheer secret. Wow. This is crazy. This is, this is messy. Y'all are messy. But no, people, (laughs) it's funny because in the last episode, we were talking about how like someone called off their wedding because they got cheated on and it was like all over social media, the the gay couple or whatever. Mm -hmm. People be like, I guess we already made like, you know, we already sent the reserve the date. So what can we do? (laughs) Right. Let's not, let's not embarrass ourselves. But it's just like, it's just as embarrassing. Yeah. Right. To know, like, oh, you know, this person has done you dirty. Right, right, right. But it's just like, what possessed? Not put. I don't want to possess, like, but like, why make the choice to mess with that? Any person, like, okay, for three years. Yeah, for like however long it is. Do you feel like cheating in a sense of like, oh, you had a physical encounter with someone? sexually or whatever whether it was like the full sex or just kissing or Uh whatever one time but like it never happened again Mm -hmm. do you feel like that's the same as like people who literally because i feel like we've had we've heard a lot of people who like carry out relationships almost like constant no cheating is cheating i don't know what you're asking reoccurring i'm saying what are you asking no no ask the question again i'm sorry what i'm just saying you have people who reoccurringly cheat yeah so, and you feel like that it deserves the same amount of punishment as a person who cheats one oh, time oh i don't think it deserves the same amount of push punishment obviously because i feel like one time okay it was an accident <laughs> <laughs> but you keep doing this like you playing with me right you you playing with me right i just don't i just don't keep, see how people like find it in themselves to keep doing it right it's like they're just taking advantage of the person that they're with. Yeah. But do you think like it's you're able to be like, oh, I'm I'm just so sexually attracted to someone, but I I don't love them like I love this person. That's why I keep ending up in this situation. Maybe, but in that case, then you need to be single. Yeah, because it's just like 
you need to be like a sexually liberated person, clearly, mm -hmm. where you could have sexual encounters with multiple people and have zero consequences for it. Yeah. Like, and I mean, I'm, nowadays, department? like people are poly and all of this. Like, it's not something yeah. that's like frowned upon. I feel like it's something that we're discovering, but Just it's, chat about it's it. new stuff, y'all. Y'all got new stuff to label yourselves with. <laughs> Should I come out to my formerly gay sister? Hey, Jojo and Dara, I just want to say I'm so grateful for the space you two have created. I really feel safe and seen watching your show. Thank you. I really resonate with a lot of things you all express and have had similar experiences. Thank you for being real and transparent. Showing up as yourselves every week is a gift in itself. Thank you. So cute. Here's my question. I'm 29 and I have recently decided to date women exclusively. I have an older sister who's a Virgo too, by the way. Period. I'm surrounded by hello Virgos in my family, and I don't know why. But they can never make me hate y'all. My sister used to date women in her early 20s, but has since stopped for religious reasons. I'm afraid to tell her that I date women because I think she might condemn me or be disappointed in me. I used to be very invested in Christianity, and I'm not as much anymore because... And I'm not as much anymore, which she knows. When my sister came out to me, I was 15 or 16 years old, and I accepted her. I just fear she won't do the same today. I feel like she may think less of me because I was big on my faith, and now I'm not. She may see it as me regressing, but maybe I'm just assuming the worst. Me and my sister have, are close and talk about almost everything. I really wish I could ask her about things and tell her my experiences. Do you think I should come out to her or should I wait until I'm in a relationship and tell her then? I don't think that you have to wait to be in a relationship to tell her then. I feel like you can say it like now. What do you think? I mean, obviously you want, like you said, you guys have a close relationship. So you want to be able to like go to her with these things. Mm -hmm. um, and I honestly, I mean, only you know your sister. So I can understand like being scared that it might backfire and she not, might not be as accepting, which almost seems a little crazy because she did have that experience in her life. Um, and I don't know, it's, it's hard to tell which way it could go because in all honesty, she could be very like, I don't want to say open and accepting to it being as though like now she's heavily in her religion again, but she could still be there for you and, and, and want to be there for you because because of her experience in that, you know, right in be in dating women or however she was before, mm -hmm. um, I guess like my example of that was like me never telling my mom. Mm -hmm. Like I always say, oh, I didn't officially like. I know she had her ideas, she had her, you know, whatever people outing me to her, but she essentially didn't know straight from my mouth, and I didn't tell her until later when I was older, and that was always out of fear of like, oh, well, just because I have a gay uncle and a gay best friend that, you know, she loves and still whatever. I always think like, oh, but as people's, you know, child, like it's different. People are weird when it's their own child. So I guess I always feared that like that. Oh, just because she accept those that surround us doesn't mean that she'll accept me. And I don't want to take that relationship away from us. But I also felt like me hiding the part of myself, especially with dating. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like that's, uh, you know, a growing part of your life that I felt bad in my first relationship that I like took that away from my mom. Mm -hmm. Cause for four years she didn't know, even though she kind of knew like, Oh, I was with that person. You know, I didn't get to go and cry to her when it ended. Right. I didn't get to go and like, you know, that heartbreak season of my life, she didn't get to experience. Um, so I just feel like, it could be bad and she might not accept you, but it also could be good and she could be there for you. Right. It's really a hit or miss. Yeah. Um, but I, the religion thing is so like complicated and tricky. Yeah. Like I talked about it. I think I talked about it briefly before how like there was this guy who was in the um, Orlando Post shooting in the mm -hmm. nightclub and like a gay man and then after that happened his whole world changed and then like now he's like apparently straight mm -hmm. because went to church and all of this and like 
whatever. I'm just shrugging because I'm just like, I don't know how it could just flip like that. But at the same time, it's like they know themselves. And if that's what they want to live, everybody with, goes on their fine. own journey at some point. Right, right, and, right. and whether that's spiritually, you know, mm -hmm. religiously, um, we right. all go through phases. Right. So it's weird, to, you know, at times because you're just like, how? How could you just right, go from right, this right. to that? But uh -huh. that's not for us to to be able to decipher whether yeah. that's just crazy or not crazy. Like everybody has their own yeah. journey. So Yeah, and like you're you're a grown woman. So I feel yeah. like she yeah. She has It'll, to it would suck to not have her, but you know, if you do have other people you can turn to create a space for you just yeah. in case the one you have isn't accepting right. or welcoming anymore yeah i agree but i hope that that goes well and i hope that she does find it in herself to like want to be there for you being as though she has had prior experience in mm -hmm. in that yeah field i remember when i was coming out to my sisters i was so scared like not that they were gonna I don't know. I was just so scared. Like, I was literally crying as I was telling her. So, I get being scared. And it had obviously nothing to do with religion because my sister's not that religious. But you just get scared. Yeah. You don't know how they're going to react. So, I definitely understand you, like, having this hesitation. And, like, you know, it's a big deal. But Probably. I hope it goes well. All right, y'all. That's it for our episode today. I hope you liked it. Yeah. Um Hopefully those questions start up some some yeah. juicy conversations. We'll try to link for them in the description. Yeah. But um don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Deuce deuce, mother goose. Bye.